had an incredible meeting this past Wednesday about the future of this church, the expansion of this church, everything that's laid up over there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna regurgitate all of it. It is still there, it is recorded, pre-recorded, and you can go watch it at your leisure. All you have to do is go to the app, fill out the information, we'll send you the link and the password to go in and you can watch and hear everything that was said. I'm not gonna divulge. The very bottom line is that thousand seat sanctuary was our first phase originally, but because of inflation, what was gonna be a $6 million project because of inflation is now guesstimated to be close to $12 million by the time we complete it. And I'm not gonna be a bad steward. If you have, you should never buy a $6,000 car for $12,000. You should never buy a $60,000 home for $120,000. You should not build a $6 million building for $12 million. That is bad stewardship. And I want you to hear my heart. Be very clear. If I had a check today for $12 million, I still wouldn't be a bad steward. If every dollar we needed was in the account, I still would not be a bad steward of it. But I also know that God is in this season. So we were in a three-phase process to build and expand here. And what we've done is we've taken phase three, and we're going to make phase three phase one. Okay? And we're going to do expansion into four year. We're going to start laying the groundwork for the entire four year, but a portion of the four year and open this thing up a little bit and, and do the things that we need to do. We, we will, by the time this next phase is done, we'll be able to see um, almost 600 in the sanctuary in addition to kids expansion and all the stuff that we'll be doing during this process multiple services still we won't be in three thank the Lord unless God just blows our mind and listen if I'm gonna die I want to fulfill ministry if y'all gonna kill me I want to be killed right here don't kill me in the parking lot kill me right here in the platform okay I, just, I want to die right here. The Lord said, just let me out. And then you got to go to heaven to figure out what the Lord was saying. <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> this expansion for this new phase, that was going to be six and a half million. That was going to end up being close to 12 million by the time it was all said and done. This expansion is going to run three and a half million. Okay, and we're good stewards here. The banks are already lined up. They got all that stuff together. They're willing to let us lend us that money. We're a good steward here. It's a three and a half million dollar project. If you just take your, your checks out and just million is spelled M I. Listen, call me stupid, but I believe in the next seven years there will be a million dollar check written. I believe that with all my heart. Not because I deserve it, but because of what God is doing here is so His. That He's going to finance the work of the kingdom. I believe it. Call me stupid and naive. I've, I've been that all my life. But I've not been sitting in boats watching miracles. I've been trying to walk them out. Three and a half million dollars. The bank's are going to give us a 20-year note, but they asked us, you know, the standard is you typically pay it off in seven. Seven years, three and a half million dollars. I believe, I believe tithing works. So I'm not focused on three and a half million, although if, if you feel the need, you feel free. Hallelujah. Be filled in Jesus' name. Amen. I will, we, we'll put a plaque right beside the bathroom and we'll make that your memorial bathroom. You will not be the only one allowed to go in there. But I will put a stall in your name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor Chris sat here. <laughs> Whatever. So stupid. I, I, believe, I believe in the principle of tithing. So I'm not focused on paying off three and a half million in seven years. Lord, tithing works. So I'm focused on $350,000 over seven, every seven years. But just like me, the overwhelming majority of us, three and a half million might as well be 350,000. 350,000 might as well be three and a half million because it's still a lot of zeros before the decimal. It's beyond all of us. 
the overwhelming majority of us, not beyond God, not beyond God. When I was a youth pastor, I, I led one of the projects for our expansion back in the, the church I was before we planted Judah. It was a six, six, six point four million dollar Center for Discipleship project. We brought in a company to come in to help us inspire. We were a church of about 11, 1200 at that time. We brought in a company to help us inspire people to give, building on our heritage for our, leg, our future, something was the campaign slogan. We brought in people to inspire people to give. We're in contract. We paid them between $40,000 and $50,000 to help us raise $6.4 million. We got so far into that contract, and, and for, for the sake of that staff and the integrity of that team, I want you to know, they didn't, we did not realize what it was we were getting involved in. What was once, to, what we thought was supposed to be inspiration turned into manipulation. Y'all right? Turned into manipulation. And all of a sudden, it's the people who have this amount of income in their homes, they get stake. And the people who have this amount of income, they get a potluck dinner. And the people who have this amount of income, you get to come to the church service and get a bulletin. So we're going to cater to the people that God has blessed with significant resources. And we're going to make the widow with her two mites feel like she can't be a part. And what was supposed to once be inspirational has turned into manipulative. And we as an elder team and all this stuff, we, we kicked around what are our options. And I want you to understand, our entire elders group unanimously was like, this is not what we're doing here. We're not, we're going to be real. First word of our vision, it's going to be real conversations. And if this is really God's thing that he's building, then he's going to give us divine strategy to do it. Those of you that know, know our elder, Tisha, who is over our prayer and intercessory team, we made this decision in February. She has yet to come to me and say, God has given me a strategy. I really wish God would give her a strategy because that would make my life a whole lot easier. All of them unanimously said, this is not what we're going to do. It's a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago, the Lord, the Lord showed me a picture of a bunch of purple play balls. Now, just in case you didn't know, I'm pretty immature. No, you didn't say yeah. <laughs> Joey, don't let the devil use you, son. <laughs> so most often he speaks to me on my level I was, I, was sitting, I was sitting in that seat in the middle of the week lights were completely off in this room and I'm like God what, are we, what, what would you have us do it's one thing to preach faith it's another thing to have to walk it out okay when we go into this contract They're not going to come after your home if it falls to pieces. It's, it's, my, it's, it's all of my stuff, my legacy on the line. But it's all his anyway. Sitting in that seat right there in the darkness. And I'm like, God, what would you have us do? He showed me a picture of, of a plastic cylinder. Almost like if, if, if you've been in education at all. It's almost like at a science lab, a little beaker little cylinder beaker thing with the top and bottom and it was filled with a bunch of purple balls all the way to the top and I'm like Lord what is that he said son that's 350 balls fill up that beaker and I'm like what, what does that mean he said well if you take a thousand and 300 multiply them together That equals 350,000. He said, son, I want you to begin to build the foundation of what our children's plague land is one day going to hold. Okay. 350 for seven times seven years 
over the next seven years. So today I have 350 balls sitting up here. It's probably less than that because of the first service. And I'm asking the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Each ball represents a thousand dollars. And I know some of us, a thousand dollars might as well be three hundred fifty thousand dollars. I know where we are. Listen to me. You may not be able to do it, but maybe you have multiple family members that are here that can join together to do it. You may not be able to do it, but maybe you have a couple of close knit friends that you could get together to do it. You may not have any friends, and you may not have any family. But God, you, but God speaks to you and says, do this. I've, I've instructed the accounting department to as it tallies up and we cross a thousand, there's another ball that's put in the beaker. There's another ball that's put in the beaker, another ball. So that every level of every stage, every season of life, we all can be a part of this thing. But I'm just going to be obedient and I'm not going to bring in some manipulative group in here that doesn't have the heart of the house or the heart for the people. The Lord told me to get 350 balls with a thousand that represents a thousand dollars each. And then he said, hold this, buddy. And then he said, you take one out of every service. So my family, I'm in three services today. How many y'all coming to? I'm just kidding. I'm in three services today. And the assignment for, for the Walters household is to take a ball every service. And everything that sits under us is going to fulfill three of these balls. We're going to make the we're going to we're going to give the gift. We're going to sow the seed. And then we're going to take the ball, bring the ball back and we're going to put it in the beaker. The first offering is called Sacred Seed Sunday. The second one is the heart for the kingdom. The Lord gave me the picture for what this offering is supposed to be. This one of the three major offerings a year is called for the sake for his house. For his house. And I'm just asking the Lord to speak to you on what he would have you do. And and we're going to have a ball September the 4th, which is Labor Day Sunday. Is when I'm I'm believing that God's going to fulfill this 350 balls in that beaker. Y'all pray for Jason and his team to try to figure out how to build what I saw in the spirit. But hopefully in the next couple of weeks, you'll see it erected and we'll begin that process. And I just believe by faith, we're going we're gonna to see it fulfilled. I, I was in the office Sunday, I mean Friday morning, and I was here and, and JB was closing up. I was finishing up my notes for the message. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, take these 350 balls and put them in seven containers seven years is what they want us to do he said but each year I want you to put them in seven containers and I said Lord why he said because I'm gonna speak to one of my sons and they're gonna grab a container now I don't know if you're in this room I don't know if you're watching on live stream or you're listening to this to this sermon later and I don't know if he'll say this to me for the next six years when we do this. But for this year, he told me to put because somebody in this, under the umbrella of this house, in this room or online family, he's going to call to grab a container. I can't believe you'd say that, Pastor. Well, I can't believe half the things I say. <laughs> and you can't either half the time. But I know when I've heard the Holy Spirit, or I feel like I know when I heard, heard the Holy Spirit. And he's going he's gonna to speak. And we're all going to be obedient, and we're going to have us a ball. So I've told my media team, I said, I want you to go find me a big playground that's got a whole bunch of balls. At some point, I don't care if it's this week, next week, but somewhere, I'm, going, I'm jumping in. I'm diving in. Going in deep. Because it is a ball to build his kingdom. That sacred seed is about our hands. That heart for the kingdom is about our heart. But this seed, this offering, is about what we see by way of legacy for our future. These kids that we just saw the testimony of, 
they're one day going to be standing and sitting and leading in here and we're all going to be on our way out and they're going to be carrying the batons of what's next listen listen i don't know if you've paid attention to what's happening in this room but god's doing some very special things in this room in our midst the whole world is telling us to be divided and here we are united and God is showing up in very powerful and significant ways. There is a reason he has called a place called Praise at 12615 Steel Creek Road and he's going to build his church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against what he's building. I want you to stand with me all over the room. I know we've gone over time today. Prayer team, move in this direction for me, if you will. Elder, come on, Troy. We're getting ready to transition and shift. Hear me today. If you need prayer before you leave, salvation, you need healing in your body, there's something significant that you need the Lord to do. You've got a weight that you're carrying, and you need prayer to touch and agree. There are powerful men and women of God that are all over this front that will pray for you, touch and agree with you before you leave today. It doesn't matter whether you're far from God. It doesn't matter whether you're connected to God, but you're in a tough season. They are here to pray the prayer of faith with you. And if God is speaking, I'm going to pray this prayer real simple. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. And if God is speaking to you to come and partner with what we're doing in this house, what I believe divine strategy is for this house, these balls are available. You can grab one. And when you give that gift, whether it's next week or three weeks from now, a month from now, I think we're nine weeks away, whether it's eight weeks away from now, when you make that, when you make that decoration, you put in that gift, I want you to bring that ball back and let's put it, I'll let you put it in there and we'll celebrate the goodness of God when it's all said and done. Amen. If God's calling you to get one ball, if he's calling you to get five balls, is he calling you to get ten balls? Or he's telling you that you're going to just sow in and you're going to gather together and you're just going to trust that everything's going to come in, then we're just going to believe that by faith. But I just wanted these balls. I believe that God put this in my heart to make this a tangible reminder to those of us that are partnering in this very specific way that there's going to be significant things that are going to be released. Amen? Lift your hands all over this room. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Whatever it is you've laid upon their heart, if at all, I pray, Spirit of the living God, that they would walk in complete faith obedience, that their step would be ordered by you, because the just will live by this faith, and let us not by, walk by the sight of the gas station, the sight of the grocery store, the sight of inflation, or the sight that maybe even is in our bank account at this particular moment. Lord, let us walk in total obedience to what you would have us do. We do not give out of need. We do not give out of, see, uh, out of greed. We give according to what you have commanded us to do. We operate in that and that alone in Jesus' name. If your hands are lifted, just worship one more time all over this room. Come on, give him glory. Give him praise.